Many Burmese went to the polls this morning and ASEAN TV talks to a Myanmar political expert, Dr. Mong Zani, about Myanmar's first election in 20 years. More in this report. The November 7 general election in Myanmar is the first electoral process in two decades to be conducted in a country that has been under a strict military dictatorship since 1962. While 29 million voters are eligible for the poll, the mood that has gripped the nation, according to a pundit, is one of apathy and indifferences. But they like, uh, they yeah, like Dr. Mong Zani, a renowned expert on yes. Burmese yes. politics, yes. told us how many people it's in Burma right. view the November 7 poll. The Burmese public does not call it election. They call it selection. You know, because it's about generals picking who, who is going to go into the parliament and who is going to stay within the rank and file uh, in the armed forces and who is going to take over the uh, you know, technocratic and other uh, you know, executive ministries. For Dr. Zani and many Burmese, the political process engineered by the junta reflected a big gap between what the junta wanted and what the Burmese actually needs. He feels that the November 7 poll will fail to bring about changes that the country really needed. Precisely because this election does not offer any hope or any prospect for genuine changes in economic sector, in politics, in ethnic relations, the Burmese people, by and large, have written this off as a sham. Since independence from the British in 1948, Burma has been locked in three interrelated predicaments, namely a state of perpetual internal conflict between ethnic groups, political repression and poverty. Further, Burma also had what many academics called the resource curse, where the abundance of natural resources it possesses has actually hindered its economic growth, a condition similar to many countries in the developing world. Today, Myanmar's faltering economy is best reflected by its population's outward migrations, where millions of Burmese are forced to find works outside of Burma simply to make do, and at the same time, many ended up in refugee camps along the Thai-Burma border. And then, so what these uh, migration, outward migration from uh, Burma, indicates is that this is a society and the, and the political and economic system that no longer offer Burmese people, um, you know, a proper means of livelihood, um, you know, not to mention um, the, the kind of mobility that uh, you uh, in Thailand, uh, you know, can hope for. Along with these factors, Dr. Sani argues that the monopolization of power by the Burmese military that took place since 1962 is creating a segregated social order similar to the one that occurred in South Africa under apartheid. Uh, you know, Burma is a, uh, a country that is ruled by a new military class. And the Burmese society, for all intent and purposes, has become a military apartheid. You know, in the case of South Africa, uh, the 5% white minority uh, ruled and dominated and controlled the 95% uh, you know, black um, Africans. You know? uh, but in, in our case, uh, the new apartheid that, is, that has emerged out of this 50 years of military rule uh, is not based on um, skin color, but it's based on the color of the uniform. In this regard, Dr. Sani calls for a comprehensive changes for Burma, something that he feels that this November 7 election will not be able to achieve. He is not alone in doubting the sincerity of the junta. The Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi the National League for Democracy Party, along with many in the international community, also feels that this election or the process of political selection cannot be relied on for the long-term future of Burma. It remains to be seen what the outcome of the election will be, but certainly there's still a long way to go for whoever comes out on top on November 7 to bring peace between warring factions within the country, reconcile political differences and reform the national economy. The new government of Burma, whoever it will be, will need to achieve these things or risk pushing the country further down this path of despair. I'm Panuk Wong Shi'um of Thai News Agency, reporting for RCN TV.